Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we are going to be going over why you are losing to bad junglers. The mistakes and bad habits that you generate and possess and cultivate throughout the offseason as well as your time playing ranked and then because of them you are not able to carry, win and climb versus those junglers who don't deserve to take your LP. But remember if you are whatever rank you are and you truly think you are better than the enemy jungler every game, if that were the case you'd be winning and climbing. So if you are struggling to climb or perhaps even you are just hard stuck, a couple of these things have come up in VOD reviews and coaching and streaming and gameplay analysis and I want to bring them to you to show you listen maybe it's the early game maybe it's the mid game maybe it's a decision in the late game but these mistakes coupled with these fixes and understanding of pathing and punishing the enemy jungler who is in fact worse than you are guaranteed to launch your win rate to the moon and make sure you are gaining the LP you deserve but before we do that I need to announce that I'm hosting a week-long jungle bootcamp this will be a week-long event held in February on Nice's bootcamp.lol infrastructure using that incredible college campus like discord as our host it will include lectures challenges, coaching, VOD reviews, meeting other challenger junglers. I'm going to try get a laner to help you understand lane states as a jungler. There's going to be contests, drills, 1v1s, ARMs, anything you can possibly imagine to help you improve as a jungler. I'm going to bring forth in the bootcamp. And if you buy the right ticket, you will have access to all the VODs and the information afterwards, which means the value is tremendous. So in the description and of course the pin comment, I will leave a link to a survey. If you are interested in this bootcamp and you do want to sign up, Please go fill it out, let me know what you would want to see in it, who you want to show up as a guest speaker, what lecture topics you want covered, or do you prefer dates and time zones are. Please fill out that survey for me, even if you are mildly interested, hopefully you're very interested, and let's make this an ultimate jungle bootcamp for all junglers of all ranks. In this first example, the context is our Viego and Kane were simply sequencing in opposite directions, with the Viego going top to bottom and Kane going bot to top. Our Viego does a great job of understanding this, doing it on repeat, and is now ganking the top laner straight out of base. Again, out of base, straight top lane, straight to the gank. What up, Kanye? <laughs> I gotta watch that in real time. Why am I speedrunning this? What's he doing? It's a level eight. Yeah, he's he he he's a level down. I have double ult. There's zero chance. <sighs> well, being Kane when you want to do a crab isn't the best, but yeah. Okay, and you know that he came from top side, which means he most likely was full sequencing that, so there's no real concern here. Mordekaiz is not TPing in. Okay. Yeah, I didn't really know what to do here, so I just... I'm, I'm watching. Everything. This is the first time all game you've waffled. Meantime, so now this is where things get interesting for a jungler, because it's, it's very much a case of, as you said, 1v9. Um, I mean, the Herald's activated top lane. One yeah, could argue this... that it'd be better to do to now swap your sequencing. You've been doing sequence down the whole time, and now it'd be better to say, okay, let me just take the wolves, Grump, GP's dead out of the picture, let me go whole top lane. And you can do that because you know one, Mord has no ultimate, and two, you beat him 1v1. So let's just go and hold the lane, kill him, take the Herald, reset, and now go bottom side. Because for us, the next phase is very much trying to regain control of this. You know, two minutes, we got a dragon. So what we do is we say, okay, we're watching this. Mord has TP'd back in. GP is overstaying greedily. Now is Chung just showing sad B emotes. Very sad. What we can do is we can just rotate up here right now directly. Let's go. Let's fight this. He has Ignite. Kane was just topside and just died. So I would hypothesize that Kane's going to the bottom side of the map because that's where he should have camps available. Not far enough. The dude's still dead, which means let's just go top lane. Jungler dead, off the map, gray screen. What can I do that I couldn't do if he was in the picture or was strong? You know, what if there was a, what if gray, what if he was two levels ahead of you? And you were like, oh wow, Gray's uh, GP's low. Kind of want to fight this with Mordekaiser, but Kane's on the map. <sighs> you know he's going to use a Herald. Let's just bounce up. Because Kane was just dead, so he's just respawned. Right? And that's important. That's yeah, important yeah. of the death timer. He's, no one is going to interfere. No one can interfere. Because Seraphina cast it in the mid. I, I hadn't considered that at all during game. That's the next step of your I mid game. I can see how it's a very... We have two minutes. So basically, you have to figure out what can I do in the next 90 seconds that allows me the best opportunity for map control over this dragon. Not that I want to die for it. If we can't take it, we can't take it. Cela V. I'm not, I'm not trying to turn it into a mountain dragon in the second spawn. Not at all. But... What you can do here is because it's 11.35 only, and the game seem, it, the game kind of feels a bit like it's moving forward, even though all the towers are up. Um, I would love to just go top lane here, kill him again for TPing in. Who said you could TP in? This dude, 
right? He has his ignite available to you. He doesn't really need to do much. You can easily fist the guy by yourself. Push this, take both plates. Depending on how long that takes you, you can fall back down to Grump Wolves, reset, spend cash monies, beeline to the dragon, and now you do it all over again. That's a beautiful way to transition into the mid game from a strong early game, especially considering all lanes were struggling with prio issues earlier on where you couldn't really get anything going. You know, I want the dragon, crap, bot's dead. I want the herald, oh, well, Mordecai's is taking it. I can't contest because my LeBlanc's in base. You were struggling to find a foothold all game and this right here is your keyhole moment. This guy just TP's in. GP's in a rough position because he's greeting for the plates. Okay, let's go. Pull the trigger. And the secondary decision to that is I don't want to do that right now. And GP's like, well, I really, really need to base. So, okay, I'll do Wolves. I'll do Grump. And I'm going to go whole top. Those are your two decisions. I think the first one's better in the Silo. I think the second one's better in high elo because most likely the gp is not even in that situation so you'll just be forced to do wolves grump swap your sequencing now so now you're sequencing bottom to top which is fine and hold this lane you have smite so all you have to do is go in on the mordekaiser kill him and then at the same time hit the eyeball and smite the herald <laughs> and uh there you go that's the play that's the play and instead we based Wait, we didn't base, excuse me. No, no, we, we didn't base. I, yeah, he, so you just kept sequencing. Down, I see yep. the bots come down. Yeah, that's it. Doing something. So instead of taking raptors, I'm taking yep. these nearby, see if there's something. I think my ult's coming up. No, it's still got a while to go. That makes that play extremely difficult without your ult. Yeah, if I had ult, it would be easy, but... Yeah, I saw the cheeky Q. I saw the cheeky Q try to sniper at the end but yeah that's that's a very all-in play where that you could not and now kane's gonna be showing up because okay so good so this is the extension of what i just said right you, you kill him top side most likely he's gonna be the bottom side so you know this once he's dead if you kill him and he comes from top side doing all his camps where's he gonna go when he respawns highly likely to the bottom side because that's where the dragon's gonna be that's where the bot lane that's that's losing is that's where his snowball uh seraphine uh, zaya are located and so you know he's going to be here so i think this is the first mistake we've seen in terms of pathing which is which is good um but also it shows you the danger of blindly sequencing right so for a challenger fix to this problem of changing your sequencing i have uploaded a shivana gameplay to my secondary channel that showcases the need to swap map direction when good or bad things happen and how it allows you to punish enemy junglers frequently i will timestamp link that below for you in this game, we have a Viega who does not fully track a Kane's appearance on the map and thus mistimes the plays he could make and it gives the bad jungler, the Kane, a bunch of freebies. At this stage, we could assume that Kane has just fallen back to his jungle, uh, most likely takes this and this, maybe resets and goes red or he just keeps sequencing, who knows. We see the Twitch go on a super adventure, mega gaming. Okay, there we go. And I think everyone pings it out. You ping that out. He sees it. Wow, incredible. <laughs> We hit the plant just to see, that's good. We see Kane mid lane. And again, this is where you didn't press tab, press tab. So the last time you see Kane, you see 26 CS. Now you see him again, 34, coming from the blue side. So we know. Dead. Gone. We know this. And now he's going off of our map, disappeared from vision with 34 CS. So what we do is that we do this. Luciano does this. We saw the Kane hold mid and go up. He hasn't bought. We know he's, he's doing a full second sequence, just like you did. So we ping the Lucian to say, listen, buddy, Kane is coming. I don't want to have to, to shadow you here. He doesn't pay attention to it, but he's going to get out anyway, luckily. Um, and then Kane shows up, hold up. Okay, there we go. 38. So now we know that he did his Raptors. Okay, he's going to do this. He gets six from holding the wave. He has 43. Here, he did not click on the map to see the Kane path very obviously towards his Krugs, knowing he had done a full second sequence before his first back. As such, he does not feel he has the time for the bottom crab secure. He was wrong. When you currently have bot Pryo, I told you, just hit the W smite to get it done. But you are here first. Why would we wait to make this coin flip, you know? It's very easy for you to time your Q smite. Um, it's at 450. You have it available to you. You have W to remove the shield. There's no point. Yeah. Like Twitch is obviously the, the 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 question mark, which is why I don't think a dragon is on the cards at all. We have a second red showing up. We just have to W and take it. Now, 
This is unfortunate. We smite a little soon and he gets it. And that does impact things a little bit. And then Twisted Fate with a beautiful ult into red card. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting the because you... I saw that he had red, I should just not flash. Yeah. And just let it fall off. Mm-hmm. It's just interesting that you showed a significant more aggression for this play than just taking the crap and getting out. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And here he is, here you see him. So re immediately now, it's like, ah, crap. And I think, I think this is something that wasn't, isn't always on your mind. Like you were worried about the cane coming down for the crab, but because he didn't show you, almost pretend he's dead. And then you just go for the play. It's like, oh wait, he's not dead. He just wasn't as fast as I thought he was. He's just 20 seconds behind my anticipation. Because if we take this, smite it, you get to here sooner, which means again, you have even more time, smite it, take this. You can always snack on this baby right afterwards. Um, and you know that the cane did feel clear. So his blue's gonna be up, his grom's gonna be up, his wolf's gonna be up, which means it's very important in this situation not only control this, to make sure that this plant can give us some vision, but I don't think it's worth the risk of the Valkaz in the river, so, and the Twitch moving, yeah, so Velka I think... Valkaz also hit that plant. Uh, yeah, exactly right. Me. Yeah, exactly sure. right. So that's already gone. So what we can do is we can just go... And now we know that the cane is gonna be shadowing bot lane. We know our bot is pushing up. We know they're not quite six. We know that the cane is six, but if we get crab wrapped as red, we are six, so you can counter gank this. And that's a huge play. We know that the cane would be on his blue and his grump. We can fall back to Raptors red. And then you can prime yourself for a counter gank, because come on. Really? Level six cane going blue side with a pushing Soraka. She dead. So we can we can track that easily. Every death, every death that you're off the map is time that loses you tempo and control. There's Twitch. There's Kane. Oh look! The death that you had means you are not here for this counter gank. Now even so, it does present itself a juicy scenario. Yeah, this should have been a kill, but I Yeah. I mean, it sucks because if you don't use your flash here, like you said you shouldn't have. And you I just can fall back to this. We're here earlier. We're here before the Twitch. You have the flash to match the Twitch. I don't know, at least one kill, right? For this last mistake, we use a master tier example to showcase the empty skull errors that occur at all levels of play and do actually happen in most of your games. But these mistakes must be controlled into not being a consistent problem or you simply will never climb. The Kha'Zix was a bad jungler, Arexai punished him for it, and that's something that should always be done. Um, but this is fine. Blue Grump? Did Zillion seriously stay? Why? Why are we doing this? <laughs> you know Rek'Sai started topside. You know Rek'Sai sequencing down. You know Rek'Sai's gonna be in the area. You know your ADC has to retreat back to base. You know Rakan's gonna have temper prior to roam mid. You know Rek'Sai's gonna be here as well. There's no point in being here. We know that, um... We know the Kha'Zix will be on the top side. Yeah, you, exactly. You gotta, gotta punish the punish mistakes. Always, always, always. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 250 LP. Oh my goodness. So, when you're playing a hyper aggressive jungler, the things we need to. Rex, I was flying. The things we need to make sure we fix in terms of aggression, is always lane, up, lane state observation to make sure that we're reflecting the clear in the right direction. Most of the time, in this situation, you could easily fall clear, but then you don't really get anything bottom lane. If you're not gonna sink bottom lane, might as well do that anyway. Because uh, then you get all your camps on a cycle. All your camps are on a nice, juicy cycle, and as the Rexa gameplay showed, you can do that, yeah? However, if in the case we don't do that, we go for the crab, and now we wanna transition mid lane. When you see this mistake, and this is what's hilarious in coaching, um, with all due respect to everyone. So many times now, a Rek'Sai in a lower elo game will simply be vacuumed with their eyes oh on this mid lane. They should be staring at this LeBlanc thing, all right, I gotta go mid lane, because I'm Rek'Sai, I gotta gank. But as someone said in chat, mistakes being punished is the way you climb. And trust me, if they're doing this mistake always in high elo, and it does happen, you gotta punish it. And if it does happen in this elo, it's happening in every other game, trust me. However, what is weird is a Kha'Zix leaping into a Rakan Rek'Sai. 
that we can agree should not have been done. <laughs> well, there you have it. A few clips from gameplays, from coaching. Once again, a little bit of a different approach. It is definitely allowing me to bring you content faster and more often, as well as allowing me to stream as well. So while I always want to bring you high quality content, sometimes the high quality is just the knowledge. If you're okay with that, please do let me know and I'll keep it up. Just want to bring you more videos a month, more streams a month, and more information to help you reach your goals. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like, share, and comment if you did enjoy and learn something. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.